Ever wanted to organize an event on Discord but found it too difficult to coordinate everyone? Well, check out this guide on how to set up a self-registration lobby where organizers can easily see who's registered to the event and what level or role they have registered at. Organizers will then be able to assign participants to teams and each team will be able to see their own dedicated space for both voice and text communication. The example you'll see is what I've implemented for the official Sky Knights Discord server. Sky Knights is an awesome team-based aerial combat MOBA from Hampers Bankler, currently available on Steam and boasting a whopping 94% tile Steam approval rating. The Sky Knights game and Discord server is linked in the description below, so go check them out as soon as you're done here. And no, I have not been paid for this video. I am an official Sky Knights Discord server administrator, however, and since I've implemented the system there, I've decided to share it with all of you because it's super amazingly awesome and fairly easy to implement. I'm Yoken B and welcome to Yoken's domain of great games and guides. If you like this video, click that like button, subscribe to my channel, click that bell icon, follow me on Twitter, follow me on Twitch, Facebook and Patreon for those who might want to show some added support. Also be sure to join our Discord community which is where I'm most active. Since Sky Knights is based on aerial combat, I've chosen the International Red Flag event as a theme to model against. From end to end, this Discord gaming events planner uses Discord roles, channel permissions, text formatting, dino bot tags, 11 custom commands and the Discord developer mode option. Actually, let's go activate the developer mode right now, otherwise you might run into some issues later on and not entirely know why. What you need to do is you need to go down to your user settings and in your user settings go down to appearance and all the way down to advanced developer mode. Make sure that that is ticked on. And with all that, this is a quick demo of what we'll be implementing in this video. Generally, there will be a rec room where people can just come together and chat about upcoming or past events. As an organizer, you can go to the registration channel and once you're over there, you can create a new event by specifying the date, the time and the time zone. Once an event is created, it will show you the event listed above. At any given stage, you can then see the status of the event which will show you the event status and who has enrolled in the event and as what kind of expert level. As someone that is partaking in the event you can go to the registration room and you'll see that only the rec room and the registration is currently available until such time as I want to join as an expert or as a novice. Once I join as an expert the event details is displayed again for everybody and then it says that there's one combatant registered and that combatant is an expert. If I decide that I'm not an expert, I don't want to change down to a novice, it will show that I am now a novice and not an expert anymore. At the same time, all combatants get access to the war room. In the war room is where organizers can then assign members to different teams. You can view the teams, which will show you all combatants registered for this event and then you can assign members to the various teams. Once members are assigned to a team, they are shown in the combat list as well as in the blue or the red team list at the moment. And because I have assigned Stealthy Raptor to the blue team, he now has access to the blue team text channel as well as the blue team voice communications channel. All combatants also gain access to the event lobby. If you do want to reset teams, you can simply go and say reset, which will then take all the teams and remove them from the blue or the red team. Now you can see again, Stealthy Raptor only has access to the event lobby and the war room. Once a member wants to leave, they can simply say leave to get removed as a combatant, which means that they will then need to re-register going forward. So now if I do a status check, I can see that there's nobody registered anymore. Once the event is complete, what the organizers can do is they can just close the event. 
the event will then be displayed as no red flag event scheduled anymore. Okay, to start off, you want to create five roles. Go to your server settings and click on roles. The first role is the organizer's role, which will be able to manage the event, create new events and manage participants. Next we have combatants, which are the participants who's enrolled in the event. We also have the expert and the novice. Both of these shows members that have enrolled in a particular skill set. And then we've got the blue team and the red team, which is, well, for the blue team and the red team. Go figure. Once we're done with your roles, make sure that the organizers and the combatants are above the lowest roles that you want to add in your server. Also, make sure that you have any special settings set for them. For me, I've set the organizers to be able to allow anyone to mention this role. And then the standard settings you want all of the other channels or all of the other roles to have is read text and channels and see voice channels as well as send messages. And then for the organizers, you want to add connect, speak, mute, deafen, move members and use voice activity. For the combatants, definitely use voice activity, connect and speak. And for all the other channels, make sure that they've got read text channels as well as connect and speak and use voice activity. Once the roles are set, let's get to the channels. For the channels, first you want to create a category and add the following roles there. So in this category, I'm going to edit the category in the permissions. I have set everyone to not be able to read this. For the lowest server role that I have added, I can then say those people can see this channel. And next I've got the organizers which can see the channel and manage messages. Be sure to add Dino and Dino Premium in there if you do have Dino Premium in your server. Once the category permissions have been set, what you want to do is create five text channels and three voice channels. Simply click on the plus over there and start adding in the names. So the first I've got is the rec room. And don't worry about the private channel setting over here. This will actually inherit all the permissions that you just set in the category. If you click on that plus icon and create channel over there. So go ahead and create the rec room, registration, war room, blue text, red text, and then three voice channels, the blue, red, and event lobby. Now, if you do want to add any of these emojis, I have linked the emoji site that I use in the description below. So go have a look there and add some flair to your channels. Next, what we want to do is ensure that we've got the added permissions for the war room, blue and red rooms. So under the war room, make sure that you add combatants and let combatants be able to read the messages. For the blue room, add the blue room to read it. For the red room, you do the same, but just with the red roll. Then set those same settings for the blue and red channel to be able to view the channel. Event lobby again has the combatants set in the permissions to be able to view the channel and connect. Great, so all our server channels have now been set up. Next, what we want to do is add some help messages into the registration and the war room to help combatants and organizers to know which commands they can execute in these channels. Now the registration channel is aimed to be kept purely for registration purposes. So all of these commands you see over here will be purging this channel and then displaying the latest information. I've used Dino Premium's message embedder feature to create the messages you see here, which has the multiple columns embedded in the message. If you're interested in Dino Premium, check out my showcase video on it. And remember that you can win a one month free Dino Premium subscription every month from my Discord server linked in the description below. You don't need Dino Premium though. Have a look at my ultimate Discord formatting guide to see how you can create some seriously cool messages even without the message embedder feature. Very important. Pin the information messages. Otherwise, all of these commands, when they get executed the first time, will wipe them. 
Now, as a final item before we continue to the custom commands, we need to create the event tag, which will then be edited and used by some of the custom commands. So for that, all you have to do is tag, create, whatever your event name is, and then specify the text. I've simply executed tag, create, red flag event, no red flag event scheduled. Okay, and finally, we can get to where the real magic happens, which is the custom commands. So remember, all of these commands will be accessible in my Discord server, which is linked in the description below. Now, let's go over the custom commands for the registration channel. The registration channel has a sole purpose of getting members to register. As such, most of the commands used over here will actually purge all the messages in the channel so that the channel can be kept fresh and clean and relevant with the latest information. The first command we're going to be looking at in the registration is the new event command. So with the new event command you need to specify a date and a time and the time zone. The new event will purge a thousand messages and then it will edit the red flag event tag and update the red flag event with the information that you just supplied. Once the tag has been updated, it will remove all combatants from previous events, all, com uh, all members from the expert and all members from the novice list to clean out all the lists for a new event registration. And then finally, it will then display the information for the next red flag. You can also run the status command and the status command will again clear all the items in the channel and then display the event information, the tag, and then display any active members that's enrolled in combatants, in expert, and in novice roles. As a combatant, I can now go and say, hey, I want to be enrolled as an expert. The expert command then purges all the information, it displays the information of the event, and then displays the combatants currently enrolled and in which bracket they have enrolled. So currently there's only an expert. For Stealthy Raptor, I am going to enroll in a novice. And again, it does show the combatants and the expert and the novice, which is Stealthy Raptor. Now, if somebody decides to leave and Stealthy says, no, I don't want to be part of this, he leaves and simply gets removed from all those lists and the lists get displayed again. Continuing on to the war room. Once we're in the war room, people can look at the teams currently assigned and we can see that even though people have enrolled in the server, nobody has been assigned to any given teams. So the organizer can now go and assign members to the teams. I'm going to assign Jochen to the blue team and I'm going to assign Stealthy Raptor to the red team. Now for both of these, you can see that it purges the messages from Dino specifically. Now you can see over here the purge user ID 100. That means that I only want to delete the Dino and Dino Premium messages. If you have got Dino Premium, you need to use the Dino Premium ID. In order to do that, simply right click on the Dino or Dino Premium and then say copy ID. This will only be available if you have enabled the developer mode as per the beginning of this video. Once you have that ID, you can then open a bracket, at, and then the ID itself, and then close the bracket. For the reset command, that simply clears all the messages in this channel and removes everybody from the blue and from the red roles. The team channels that you see over here, the blue and the red channels over there, is purely for indicating to the combatants where they'll be chatting depending and that'll just take them to the relevant group if possible. And then finally if the event is closed the organizer can just run in war. Now that reset times three means that you need to go into the blue and do a reset over here and into the red and do a reset over here. Once the war has ended you can go back to registration and then you can run the close event. Now what the close event does is that it purges all the information, it edits the tag back to say that there's no current event running, and then it removes all the combatants, experts and novices, and then displays the event information. With all of these commands in place, you're just about to let it loose in your own server. 
Please take note of the following though. It's essential that when your Discord gaming event organizers close an event, that you need to do the following steps to ensure the system runs smoothly. First, reset in blue, red and war room. Then run end war in the war room to remove members from combatants, blue and red rolls. And then run close event in registration to remove members from combatants, expert and novice roles. So if you've liked this video, please click that like button down below. Subscribe to my channel, click that bell icon, follow me on Twitter, follow me on Twitch, Facebook and Patreon for those who might want to show some added support. Also be sure to join our Discord community which is where I'm most active. Thank you for watching, Yoken out.